Welcome to another edition of On the Money with the Certified Financial Group right here on News 96.5 WDBO. We are here with Aaron Burt and Nancy Heck, Certified Planner Professionals at the Certified Financial Group. Good morning. Hey, hey, morning. hey how are you doing? I'm doing how great. How are you guys today? It is wonderful outside. It is today. nice outside. Yes. It is beautiful. Somebody will disagree with this. Yes. Nancy yes. will. Yes. But I will just wish everybody a happy Passover and a happy Easter. Yes. And ignore the weather. It's, she doesn't like the cold. No. She doesn't. No, no. Nope. It's it's an ongoing theme here. Well, that's why you live in you live in Florida for days like this. But she likes the heat. I yeah, but she likes ninety four and one hundred percent humidity. Yeah, my no, aunt, my the one hundred percent humidity. I don't agree with. The okay, temperature, okay. Yes, the, <laughs> the yeah. ninety four. She likes the heat. Yes. Well, uh, outside of talking about the weather, like or dislike, what are we here doing on the radio today, guys? Well, we are here. Nancy and I are here. To to talk about anything having to do with your personal financial situation. Um, Monday through Friday in our office, we see clients in our office come in and they want to talk about things having to do with, can I retire? How should I be saving for retirement? What should I do about Social Security? What should, do I need life insurance? Do I need long-term care insurance? All those types of pocketbook questions Nancy and I are here to discuss on the radio with you today on Saturday for the next hour for absolutely free. So you come into our office Monday through Friday, chances are we'll do our complimentary consultation. But if you want us to get really in-depth, we charge you a fee. But here on Saturday, we are doing this for free. So the good news is the lines are absolutely wide open. So if you're interested, pick up the phone and dial 844-220-0965. That's 844-220-0965. And not only do we have the phone lines open, we got the text lines open as well. 21232. That's 21232. Each dash to keep it about 160 characters because that's all we can see on our screen. And you know what? If phone and texting is just not in the cards today, we have another way. Head on over to Facebook.com slash Certified Financial Group. Watch the live video. You could see Aaron and Nancy in the studio today. Aaron's basically in a T-shirt because it's nice out. Nancy's bundled up because it's cold, and it's uh, it's a great uh, view on the uh, uh, hey, Facebook I'm repping live. my Cleveland Indians gear today. Yes. I'm ready. We yeah, got they, a doubleheader against the Braves today, so I'm excited. Yes, yeah, so then you got a big game, a big series coming up with the Red Sox. This, uh, this uh, week, no, no, I think oh. that's in June sometime. Okay, that's maybe what I'm thinking. Maybe. Of. I, don't uh, know. I don't know. Right. But uh, head on over to the comments on uh, the video. And if you leave a question there, we'll be able to answer it here on the radio today. Topic of the day, Nancy Heck things to do now to prepare for 2019's taxes. So, actually, this is my topic, Carl. Oh, it's your topic. I'm, just, okay. I'm just here for looks today. Oh, oh, well, <laughs> the, the that candy. was not in my notes. I thought it was that's Nancy's okay. topic. Nope. We, no, actually, and this is something that both of us could actually discuss because, you know, tax, um, you had to file your taxes on Monday. And one of the questions that we're getting now is what should we be doing so that we don't have to pay taxes or what can we be doing now to put into place for our taxes for 2019? And really, this is the time to be planning for those types of things. What, what, what sort of account should I be opening up? How can I be saving more money? What should my, withhold, what should my withholding be? And this is a question that we get all year long. And then people, unfortunately, from January until April 15th, are trying to figure out ways to be saving or be putting money in different types of vehicles so that they're trying to minimize their tax bill. So what can you be doing now? Well, the first thing you should be doing is looking at your withholding and that, and your withholding is done on your W-4. That that was a big issue this tax year for a lot of people uh, with the tax law changes. People were getting back more in their paycheck and right. getting a smaller refund. And there's a big push for people to really look at their W-2 and make sure that they have the proper withholding. Right. And, and actually, I saw an article recently that they're talking about changing the with, how you withhold. So at long story short, make sure you're withholding enough uh, from your paycheck. And there are tools out there online. I actually got a question from somebody this week. And I know TurboTax has a great uh, W-4 estimator where you can go in and plug in your estimated earnings and they'll tell you what your withholding should be. I think the withholding is the strangest thing, how they do it, how it's uh, married plus one or plus two. or right. I think it's just odd. But anyway, it's the way our government works with the IRS. So anyway, go online. You can. Um, there's some tools out there to adjust your withholding. The other questions we get from is, um, especially if you're self-employed, there's a lot of opportunities out there for you to be able to save money. Um, one of the big tools that's available to you if you're self-employed working by yourself or with your spouse is to set up a solo 401k. 
And a solo 401k allows you to maximize 401k contributions as an employee and then also do an employer contribution on top of that. So it's a very valuable uh, tool, a powerful tool for you to be able to save yourself um, in retirement if you're self-employed. The, the only reason I bring that up now is because to open a solo 401k and contribute to it for 2019, you have to actually open it this year and make the employee contributions this year. It's not something that you can do in the January to uh, April timeframe. So that's another powerful tool. Right. And I'm, I'm a big fan of the self-employed pension. Self, yes. Yeah, depending self-employed on, pension. Yes. The SEP. Yes. You can put aside 20, 25 percent of your adjusted gross income up to this year. It's fifty six. Yeah, fifty six thousand. Fifty six thousand dollars. I've got a stupid question. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have to be self employed to open up a self employed pension? Because yes. it sounds yes. like there's a benefit. Yes, you okay. have to have ten ninety nine income. Ten four. So you have ten ninety nine income. Yes. Okay. Correct. Correct. So if you're an employee and then you have a, a side business. Mm-hmm. Then you could do the self-employed pension with the 1099 income from the side business. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. So, so my my wife is in, is employed, and this is a good example. My wife is employed, and she also has a side business where she sells Rodan and Field skincare. Mm-hmm. And so she gets a 1099 for from Rodan and Field, and part of that um, income that she gets from that 1099, she's able to then put into a SEP IRA for herself and fund that for her own retirement in addition to the money that she can put in through her employer. So it's uh, through her 403B through her work. So there's lots of opportunities with the SEP. Now, the beautiful thing about the SEP is you can actually open it up um, after the tax or after this calendar year. So you can make 2018 or 2019 contributions all the way up until you file your 2019 taxes. So it doesn't have to be done in the calendar year. And another benefit is uh, for people that have access to a corporate plan, whether you're taking advantage of it or not, and also want to save an either deductible IRA or Roth, there's also uh, there's income limitations. With the mm. SEP IRA, that doesn't apply. Yeah, correct. So. There are no income limitations or phase outs, as they like to call them, right. uh, for a SEP IRA contribution. So same thing with the solo 401k. The only advantage to the solo 401k is that you can. there's no percentage limit. You can do employee contributions um, if you earn whatever you earn. So Yeah, well, that's interesting. That's good to know. If you have a side business... That, that's another option. That's oh, yeah. great. That's what yeah. we're doing on the radio today. Yep. Well, 844-220-0965 is the number to dial us up. Again, 844-220-0965. Tim has dialed us up. Tim, go ahead. You're on with the Certified Financial Group. Hi, Tim. Yeah, hi. How you doing? Um, I have a question. I listen to you guys quite a bit, and I don't recall um, what you guys had said of prior weeks is uh, – to answer this, my grandson's father uh, passed away, and he's nine years old. Um, he's got a Social Security check, of approximately a little over nine thousand coming a year now. Where is the best place to put that money for him for the next nine, ten, twelve years, or whatever, to uh, for him to collect as much on it as he can? I would suggest a five twenty nine college savings plan. Five twenty nine. Um, that's it. Yeah. 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 Everything that you put into the 529 accumulates on a tax-deferred basis. And if it's used for qualified education expenses, then it comes out tax-free. Oh, great. That's what I was hoping to find out, you know, what he could could pay his college off on this. Right. Yes. He could use it for housing. He could use it for transportation. He could use it for any computer he might need, tuition, books fees, any any of the, the qualified higher education costs. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and you would be the the owner on the account for him, and he's the beneficiary. And then you could have somebody else, uh, a spouse if you have one, as a successor owner. Okay. Uh, is that accrues interest or? Yes. I mean, they're, yeah. they're invested in uh, mutual funds. Uh, yeah, it's. One so of the companies, higher. yes, one of the companies that I like to use is American Funds has uh, uh, a nice 529 college savings plan. Are, um, are, are they in the state of Florida, Tim? Um, well, no, he's in Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, so that's, so Pennsylvania has state income tax, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, they do. So you would have to look, uh, you would want to consider doing the Pennsylvania 529 plan. Um, just because they'll get a state tax deduction 
or contributions to those plans. So Alrighty. if you're going to do a 529, you want to, in, in Florida, it doesn't matter what 529 plan because we don't have state income taxes. Correct. But in Pennsylvania or a state that does have state income taxes, there's usually a lot of advantages to using, from a tax perspective, for using their plan in that state. So you would want to have your, your grandson look at the 529 plan for the state of Pennsylvania. Okay, excellent, guys. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the call. Thank you. Yep. All right, Tim. Just like that. Uh, if you want Tim's line, it's 844-220-0965. That is 844-220-0965. We also have the text machine up and running as well. 21232. That is 21232. Not only do the Certified Financial Group come here on the radio every Saturday morning from 9 to 9 to 10 to answer your questions. They also have another tool that the, you can use to help you get an advantage in saving for retirement. That's called the workshops. And each and every week they have a workshop at their office to where you could come by at 1111 Douglas Avenue, put that in your GPS. And what is that upcoming workshop schedule there, Nancy? Well, the next workshop is Saturday, May 18th. Everything you want to know about mutual funds. Um, the, the workshops are from 9 to 10, uh, 11 in our office. They're all hosted by Gary Abley, and he does serve uh, light refreshments. So that was everything you want to know about mutual funds, Saturday, May 18th. And then the next one is Healthcare Options in Retirement, Saturday, June 22nd. Now, that's a super popular one. Uh, that one fills up quick. So if that's something that you're interested in or you're approaching Medicare age 65 and you have questions about that or your long-term care questions or Medicaid questions, that is a great um, workshop to attend and it fills up. So June 22nd, 9 to 11, um, if you're interested, obviously sign up early. Yes, you can go to our website, financialgroup.com. There's a drop down for workshops and you can make your reservation. And then the next popular one is Countdown to Retirement. That's Saturday, July 20th. Um, Countdown to Retirement. Countdown and that's for people retirement. that are roughly five years away from retirement? Yes, yes. You're at or near retirement. So, yes. And then Saturday, August 24th, Financial Basics, Key Elements to a Successful Financial Plan, where Gary will go over everything that we do in our financial planning process. And last one on the schedule is Saturday, September 14th, Will Your Savings Last a Lifetime? Will Your Savings Last? What's the target uh, for there? Or will Your Savings Last a Lifetime? Uh, both people, people that are nearing retirement are in retirement. Okay, so in retirement. Yeah, and they want ideas about whether or not they've accumulated enough and what our planning process is. It, again, it's a great workshop. Gary does an excellent job, and all of those are held at our office, again, 1111 Douglas Avenue. And if you're interested, go to our website, financialgroup.com, and click on workshop slash events at the top of the page, and you can sign up and register right there. Or you can call our office on Monday morning and uh, speak with Gary and get on the schedule. Or get All on right. Work. And they always fill up quick. Yes, yes they do. Yeah, yes. They got to call right now. What was the uh, number and website one more time to it's register? Financialgroup.com. And our, our office number, again, is 407-869-9800 or 1-800-EXECUTE. All right. Well, that is Aaron Burt alongside Nancy Hex, Certified Planner Professionals at the Certified Financial Group. And we are taking your phone calls this morning, as we always are on Saturdays here on WDBO, 844-220-0965. That is 844-220-0965. Barnett and Winter Garden is good to dial this up. Barnett, hang on the line. We have to get the three big things we need to know. No. Part of our Ask the Experts weekend. 844-220-0965 is the number to dial us up and talk to Nancy Heck and Aaron Burt, Certified Planet Professionals at the Certified Financial Group. We are four minutes away from the latest news, weather, and traffic with Dave Wall in the News 96.5 Newsroom. So we want to get right back to your questions because that's what we're doing here on the radio today. Barnett in Winter Garden patiently waited. Barnett, go ahead. You're on with a Certified Financial Group. Good morning. Hello. Hi, Barnett. Hi, Barnett. Hi, how are you? Great. Good. Good. What can we do for you? I have a question about, um, cert I guess it's uh, certified charitable contributions. Okay. Qual qualified, and, char qualified charitable qualified. distributions? Yeah, I'm sorry. Qualified charitable contributions, yes. Yeah. from If I'm uh, required to take my RMD this year, I understand that I can have part of that RMD sent directly to me, and part of it could go to a charity of, of my choosing, correct? Yes. And, and that will reduce my taxable income by the amount that I contribute to the charity. Yes. 
Okay. So what, what's, what's this earliest that you can start taking those and do you have to start taking them the first year that you take out an RMD or could you wait until later and what types of charities might be eligible for those? So you actually have to be 70 and a half to do the QCD qualified charitable distribution. So you, you have, and so as long as you're older than 70 and a half, the year in which you do that qualified charitable distribution, whatever amount of your, that you send from your IRA will not Mm -hmm. count towards your required minimum distribution but will not show up in your taxable income. And you could do it any time during the year. As long as your your required minimum amount is withdrawn by December 31st of the year in which you're 70 and a half or older. And in order to have the money go directly to the charity, you have to have the proper name, the address, and the tax ID number. Just provide that to your IRA custodian and the dollar amount that you wish to have go directly to the charity and they should be able to take care of it for you. And it, and it has to be a 501c3 organization. So, so okay, so would like a, uh, a church or, uh, you know, religious uh, organization qualify? Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. Great. Okay, thank right. you for the answer. Sure. Yes, you're very thank welcome. Thank you for your call. And, and for the rest of our listeners, uh, for the QCD, you're actually able to give – it's a great way to give to charity, first of all, because right now with the new standard deduction, a lot of people were not able to itemize their charitable uh, contributions this year. But if you're over 70 and a half, the qualified charitable distribution is the is really and, and your itemizing is really the only way that you can get credit for those contributions. So if you're charitably inclined, the best way to give to charity if you're over 70 and a half is to do it through your required minimum distribution through this qualified charitable distribution option. And if there's more than one charity that you would like your IRA custodian to send your the distribution to, that can be done. I've had clients that have, have had part go to them and then part go to two or three different charities. You just have to have all the proper information. The tax ID number is not that hard to get. All you have to do is call the office of whatever church or organization you're interested in. Yeah, they'll happily give it to you. Mm -hmm. Also, um, the max that you can do, and it's not just limited to your your required minimum distribution amount, you can actually do up to $100,000 per Hmm. year. So just for those people that are interested. All right. Well, if you have a, if you are interested and have a follow-up question, you can dial us up at 844-220-0965. That is 844-220-0965. Or you can text us your question to 21232. That is 21232. We will continue to plan tomorrow. Today. Right here on News 96.5 WDBO. This is News 96.5 96- WDBO, where we are taking your phone calls with Nancy Heck and Aaron Burke, Certified Financial Planner Professionals at the Certified Financial Group at 844-220-0965. That is 844-220-0965. Text your question as well, 21232. That is 21232. Aaron, for anybody that may have joined us during the latest news, weather, and traffic and is tuned in for the first time, what can they call you about today? Actually, you can call us about anything having to do with your financial situation. So um, Nancy and I are here to talk about things. So far today, we've talked about ways to give to charities from your IRAs. We talked a little bit about Social Security. Next, we're going to talk about long-term care. We could talk about your retirement. We could talk about cash flow. And we could talk about stocks and bonds and mutual funds and annuities and all Self-employed sorts pensions. of stuff. Anything you want to talk about. Having College to do with your savings, pocketbook. we got a question on 529, Social yes. Security. So we are here, and the good news is that the phone lines are pretty wide open. So if you're interested and you have a question having to do with anything, having to do with financials, you can pick up the phone and dial. 844-220-0965. That's 844-220-0965. And, of course, the text machine's up and running as well at 21232. We stashed to keep it to 160 characters because that's all we could see in the screen here. Anything beyond that, it gets cut off, and we don't want anything to get lost in the message. So just please keep it to about 160 characters. And we also have another way, facebook.com slash certified financial group. We are broadcasting live on Facebook Live. Click on the video and put a comment in or a question in the comment section, I should say, and uh, we'll read it right here on the radio today. We do have one from Cindy uh, on the Facebook video. Can you provide any guidance for people looking to purchase long-term care insurance? Yes, we can. 
That's the, <laughs> the, the simple answer. Cindy, yes, we can. So uh, because we are independent, we do not represent any one company. Uh, our attitude towards long-term care coverage is a little bit different than the typical insurance agent. Uh, we want you to be able to have uh, use, as many uses of the dollars as possible. So often uh, what I like to provide for my clients for long-term care is some type of, type of long-term care uh, annuity product. Uh, there's a bucket of cash that accumulates on a tax-deferred basis that you have access to from day one. Um, there's long-term care coverage and you can get it for different periods of time through a lifetime. If you don't use up what you've accumulated either by withdrawing the cash or for long-term care, then there's always death benefit that goes to your heirs. So there's a lot of different choices and a lot of different ways that you can make things work for you. So Cindy, yes, please give us a call and we'd be happy to put together some different quotes for you based on whatever your circumstances are. And I want to point out what long-term care insurance for the listeners out there, because that term gets thrown out, out a lot. And really long-term care insurance is meant to pay for medical, um, for medical coverage, either in your home or in a facility when you're unable to do two of the six activities of daily living. And normally that means that you can't bathe yourself or feed yourself or transfer yourself or go to the bathroom by yourself. Or if you get a, a cognitive or mental um, um, dementia, um, then the long-term sh- care insurance kicks in. And so really it's meant to help pay for some of those medical expenses when you reach a point in your life when you're unable to take care of yourself or your family's unable to take care of yourself, which is really when a lot of long-term care coverage is used is when you have an older couple and one couple, one, either the husband's taking care of the wife or the wife's taking care of the husband. And really, it, if one person is unable to take care of themselves and the other one's trying to, but this allows you to bring in someone to help offset and, and offset some of those expenses to pay for someone to come in and help. So really, that's the point of long-term care insurance is to help cover those expenses of bringing in someone to facilitate the uh, taking care of the older spouse. So anyway, I see we got a bunch of phone calls, Kyle. All right, so let's get it started then at Gary in Longwood. Gary, go ahead. You're on the Certified Financial Group. Hello. Um, Good morning. I wanted to ask about the uh, the SEP and the four o solo 401k. I did a solo 401k. Um, retired from a, a from work last year, okay. working for myself. Did a um, so I think you could do twenty five thousand or something like that twenty four five last year mm-hmm. uh, with my company. And then I did a solo 401k with what I earned on my own. My wife and I did this together Mm -hmm. and I put a certain amount in and she put a certain amount in. And I think it added up to similar, similar amount that you had mentioned on the SEP, which was like 56,000 or something you said for that. Yeah. Okay. And I'm trying to understand which one's better or what I should have done. (laughs) Um, so there's a couple of different options there. Um, the, the, there is a, set limit of how much you can contribute per person into any sort of retirement plan every year. And that's the $56,000 number that Nancy was mentioning earlier. That's a limit set by the government, whether you're putting money into a SEP or solo 401k as an employee or as an employer, the total amount that can be contributed to your account is that $56,000. Okay. Okay. So if you're putting, if you have a solo 401k, the nice thing about that is if you only earn $24,000 all year, you can put that whole 24, 25,000 for this year. You can put that whole amount into your plan um, and get that full tax deduction for that full amount. So if you earn 25, you can put in the whole 25 into the plan. If you're doing a SEP, it's a percentage of that 25. So then you're limited to how much you can put in. So that's kind of the difference between the two. Yeah, it was a 25% of your adjusted gross income or the dollar limit. Okay, so the solo 401k was probably better for me then. Probably, yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, great. Well, thank you all for bringing that up. Sure. All right, you are very welcome, and thank, thank you for, you for the call. call. Yeah, thanks yeah. so much, Gary. If you want Gary's line, it's 844-220-0965. That is 844 844-220- Zero nine six five. Let's go to Kevin in Rockledge. Kevin, you're on with the Certified Financial Group. Hi, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Uh, yeah, my question was concerning union retirement. Um, for a typical union retirement, um, does that last the rest of your life, or does it only last for how long you work for the union, the number of years? Uh, 
I, I, I'm not sure. what it. De- I think it depends on what union you're talking about. I, you're talking about the pension that you're re- going to receive? Right, exactly. The pensions normally, whether you're a teacher or you're a firefighter or whatever, you is is for your life depending on what option you choose. Yeah, the, you can go for a, a number of years or life. You can go over your lifetime or over your lifetime uh, take a reduced amount and go over the spouse. But as Aaron said, it really depends on what options your pl- your plan offers. So when you, uh, okay. so they should be able to either through HR or through your union be able to provide you with projections depending on what year you plan to retire and your years of service and what your earnings are, what your potential benefit may be. They may also offer you a lump sum to get you out of the pension and they may say, hey, here's – however much money, and, and you take that money on your own versus going into the pension plan. So every, okay. every plan is different. So there's not, a, there's not a set answer we can give you, but we can say that you should go either to your union representative or to your HR department and ask them to run some projections for you. So they should be able to do that. Okay. And, and Kevin, all right. don't go off of, well, all of the other retirees are doing X because X may not be appropriate for your situation. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you for the call. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. If you want Kevin's line, it's 844-220-0965. That is 844-220-0965. Let's go to Rick in Orlando. Rick, you're up next with the Certified Financial Group. Hi, Rick. Hi. Hi there. So I I just uh, visited my aunt in in Montreal, and uh, she was in the hospital, and she just informed me uh, that she's leaving everything to me, her house and all her cash. Wow. And I'm not sure what to do. Okay, so I'm working with somebody right now who's inheriting from the UK. And what we've had to do is get a solicitor in the UK to set up an account for the client so she could transfer everything from her dad to her under the UK rules And then there was specific paperwork that we have to do to get it converted from pounds to dollars and then transferred to the U.S. I imagine in Canada, it's going to be a similar type of situation. Uh, The nice thing is that the the exchange rate is a little bit better between Canada and the U.S. and is from the U.K. Do you go to Canada often? No, I don't. I usually go to Canada when someone's um, sick or ill or passing Mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unfortunately, yeah, I understand. So we've all, had, so we've all had, my family's there. So we've had the similar situation where clients have had accounts in other countries, and really they they leave it in the bank account, and then when they go to that country and visit, they use those dollars in order to pay for their vacations or travel or whatever it is that they're doing. But it sounds like you want to bring that money back into the U.S. Um, so like Nancy was saying, that'd be a great. Maybe you need to sit down with Nancy and kind of go over your particular situation. She can help walk you through your options in order to find the best way to bring those dollars back here for you. Plus, I'm half okay. Canadian. Oh, I did not so, know that. Yes, my mother was born in Canada. Oh, well, there you go. So. And, and I haven't heard from the attorney. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure her attorney is over there yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be getting a call um, when she passes away. Um, and that's probably what my, my first step would be, just to see what the attorney says. Right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. Sorry, well, thank you very much. Yeah, I sure. appreciate it. So if you want to call our office, uh, 407-869-9800, or you can go on our website, financialgroup.com. You can get more information about Nancy, and, and when you, the time comes and you need assistance, we'll be more than happy to help you. All righty, Rick, thanks so much. If you want Rick's line, it's 844-220-0965. That is 844-220-0965. Let's squeeze in Steve before we get the three big things you need to know. Steve in Orlando, go ahead. You're on the Certified Financial Group. Hi, hey. Uh, uh, It's a bit embarrassing. Uh, After a divorce and separation and uh, deaths in the family and what have you, um, I haven't really done my tax end uh, year end returns mm-hmm. for probably about 20 years. Wow. But I have paid each, you know, out of each pay, paycheck mm-hmm. has come out. I've been mm-hmm. told that then it, it may not be as bad as I, I may think. Okay. I still think it's going to be pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they said to get a CPA. I don't, uh, and I, I guess the IRS does some kind of, um, if you'll, of money which i probably do mm-hmm. um some kind of a a relief 
valve situation. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to figure out what my life out. Um, yeah, it, with that, because I'm uh, getting a little bit older now and uh, with health issues with uh, within my family, what little there is left, um, I'm just trying to take care of a few things. That's one of the big ones. Sure. Okay. See. And and one other question: yeah. if if y- does year end balances do that? Does that tell the IRS how much I'm getting back, or it, does each paycheck come out and tell them that as well? Well, you get your W twos every year, so that tells what you've paid in as far as taxes go. Again, whether it's right. it's enough or not will be determined. But uh, whoever gave you the advice to hire a qualified CPA uh, was a, a very good first step. Uh, okay. you, you really need to do that and make sure that you are hiring a certified public accountant, not just somebody who's a tax preparer. Uh, you want um, somebody who is credentialed and somebody who is up on all the current laws and, and could walk through these past 20 years for you. Will, will will there is there uh, somebody I can deal with directly with I, uh, IRS or should I not go that route? I would not. No, I, no, I would go to a CPA first and, yeah. and go down that and just to see what your liability is and what your potential problem is. Have them identify that for you and then go from there and they can interface with the IRS for you. It's going to cost you some money to get this cleaned up, though, so be prepared. Yeah, yeah. but it, I think it's an important first step, especially um, if you have beneficiaries or things and you're worried about your own health you don't Mm -hmm. want to leave this problem with them but the fact that you have had withholding and you have been paying taxes throughout the years is is a good thing right so yep yep all right steve thanks so much uh hope that uh situation uh, gets cleaned up for you there's a couple of different ways to go with that steve uh if you want to give out financialgroup.com uh, a website to, in the case you need more information or anything like sure. that, you can do that. Yep, financialgroup.com is our website, and you can go on there and get information about Nancy and myself and the other certified financial planner professionals in our office, and our phone number is there as well, and directions to our office. Everything you want to know about us is on the web. Well, what's the phone number? Or you can call us, 407-869-9800. Again, 407 869 Nine eight hundred or one eight hundred execute as if you're executing that financial plan. Some people just like the old fashioned phone call. Yeah, there. some yeah. people. <laughs> and 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 for Steve, we do have some independent certified um, public accountants that we could refer to him depending on what part of the area he lives in. Great, great. So. All right. Well, if you have a question for, uh, excuse me, Aaron or Nancy here, we got one segment left. So let me give out the phone number eight four four two two zero zero nine six five. That is eight four four two two zero. 0965. We will continue to plan tomorrow. Today. On News 96.5 WDBO, right after we get the three big things you need to know. It is the final segment of On the Money with a certified financial group here on News 96.5 WDBO. We are three minutes away from latest news, weather, and traffic. So I want to get right back to our busy phone lines here. Uh, Luz and Sebring. Luz, you're on with a certified financial group. Hi, I have a question because I have a small business and I have two employees that I want to provide them with health insurance. Mm -hmm. But I want to know how that will benefit me at the end of the year next year if I do provide that service or that health insurance to them. Well, by providing a benefit and, and paying for it, it's an expense to the business. And, oh, and it should be deductible. Yeah, you would get a. It would be a business expense to cover insurance for yourself and for your employees, and then that'll be a deductible expense against your income, um, oh. in order to provide that coverage. Thank you, guys. Appreciate sure. it. Yeah, sure. Very, okay. All right. Thank you, Thank you for your call. Thank, Thank you, Liz. Let's go to Tim in St. Cloud. Or quick, Tim, go ahead. You're on the Certified Financial Group. Hi. Uh, yes, I have two questions. Yep. Uh, first question is about. My father-in-law is 70 years old, and he's on Social Security and Medicare, but he still works. Okay. And uh, he asked me to find out why he still pays Social Security and Medicare, and I told him it's because as long as you're working, you do, but I just wanted to make sure that was accurate. Yes, it is. Yeah, but in every year, those taxes go into his benefit and his benefits recalculated. So if he is earning more than he had earned in previous years, his benefit can actually go up every year. Okay, that's great to know. Uh, other thing is I have uh, two retirement funds. One is a pre-tax IRA and one is a post-tax. 
Okay. And uh, I'm I'm 56 years old, so on the pre-tax, every year I put in $6,500. Will that amount go up as I get older, or that's basically all it can be? It'll go up if the tax laws change. Yeah, now it's seven, okay. Now it's seven thousand for twenty nineteen. Yeah. Okay, great. Because well, this year, last year it was sixty five hundred. Right. I put that in. That's that's great to know. Yep. Uh, and the last question is my uh, my post tax IRA on that one. Can I contribute to that along with the pre tax IRA, or only just one? By post tax, you mean you have a, it's a Roth? Yes, correct. No, you you're limited to just doing the one. It's, okay, it's, it's a dollar. Thought. Yeah, it's the dollar amount as opposed to the bucket it's going into. I, that's why I thought I had the Rice RA when I worked for a company that didn't have a four hundred one k, and uh, and I've been rolling my four hundred one k's into the uh, uh, pre tax. Okay, good. Yeah, so that, I just didn't know that account I haven't touched in about. 10 years, but it's still gaining money. Yep. All right, good. Very good. Well, that's good news. Thank you for the call. Yeah, thanks so much, Tim. Uh, we're running out of show. We only have about 15 seconds left. So real briefly, phone numbers, websites to reach you guys at during the week. Yeah, you can reach us during the week, 407-869-9800, or better yet, go to our website, financialgroup.com, uh, financialgroup.com. All right, Florida Homes and Gardens is next. We will plan tomorrow. Today. Actually, we'll do it today on next Saturday, right here at 9 a.m. on News 96.5 WDBO. This is News 96.5. Financial advisors should be consulted before implementing any of the options presented. Certified Advisory Corp. is registered as an investment advisor with the SEC and only transacts business in states where it is properly registered or is excluded or exempted from registration requirements. Information presented on this program is believed to be factual and up to date, but we do not guarantee its accuracy and it should not be regarded as a complete analysis of the subjects discussed. Discussions and answers to questions do not involve the rendering of personalized investment advice, but is limited to the dissemination of general information. A professional advisor should be consulted before implementing any of the options presented. Certified Advisory Corp. is registered as an investment advisor with the SEC and only transacts business in states where it is properly registered or is excluded.